with influx of the whole barrage of electric scooters which have been bombarding the Indian market. This is arguably the one which has caught my attention. This is the River Indy. This is a Bangalore based company. And as you can see, they have gone for a very different approach to this compared to everyone else who are in fact hell-bent on making their scooters very, very sporty. Nothing wrong with that because aesthetically then you have a scooter which looks really good. But I personally prefer this approach because at the end of the day, a scooter is supposed to score really high on utility, which means you want comfort, which means you want space. And that's one thing which the River ND absolutely nails. So let's start with the space. So you have 55 liters of space available on this, starting with the glove box, which has very neatly been integrated in the body. It's a 12 liter glove box here, which is good enough, uh, you know, to store all your purse or small hand uh, luggage. And at the back, you have a massive 43 liter boot, which is good enough for you to fit a full size race helmet and a half face helmet or a full size helmet and the charger on the go which is, yeah, the most space I've ever seen. Also, you have a flat floorboard, which comes very handy for you to carry your groceries and everything. Not just that, they're very cleverly integrated, these pegs, so that you can make full use of this space right here. They, in fact, also offer you an accessory which has covers on the side so that uh, you can protect your groceries from spilling over. And then when you look here, you also have pannier racks, which are good enough to hold 40 liters of panniers which River will provide as accessories. So in terms of space, this gets a big thumbs up. Next, they're focused on is comfort. So this is the first EV which gets 14 inch wheels. Uh, you get really chunky 110 mm tires. You have 43 mm forks up front, which are the biggest in class. At the back, you have uh, twin shocks which come with preload adjustability. So this also has the makings of a very comfortable bike. And then you have the seat, which is really nice, wide and spacious, good enough to fit people of all shapes and sizes, really comfortable for the pillion as well from the looks of it. We'll find out when we ride it. Also in terms of design, I absolutely love how they've integrated this very practical architecture with some really quirky bits in terms of the twin pod headlamps, LED headlamps, which look really cool, really quirky. I love how they have integrated the crash guards, as I mentioned, the pegs very neatly integrated into the design. Even the racks, man, I personally love it. I think it gives the scooter a lot of character. And also in terms of fit and finish, we are told that this is pretty much production ready. So what you see is what you get. And the fit and finish is actually quite impressive, quite good. The only thing which I see right now is I feel the stand could be a little sturdier. What people could have a problem with is the screen. This is a very basic six inch LCD screen. It's, uh, it's not a touch screen. It doesn't get Bluetooth connectivity. It doesn't have turn by turn navigation. In fact, River offers you a slot right here, an accessory so that you can mount your uh, phone in a sturdy manner. If you want all of those things, they have kept it very, very simple, uh, giving you the basic layout of how much, what your speed, your range, which brings us of course to the heart of the matter. This is an EV. This is powered by a four kilowatt hour battery, which is good enough for a top speed of 90 kilometers an hour, a range of uh, 120 kilometers in the eco mode. This has three different modes, eco, ride and rush. Rush obviously being the most aggressive, the most responsive of all the three modes. Now, having looked at it, having touched it and being impressed with how good this is in terms of fit and finish the design, and of course, all the practical bits. Now let's go ahead and ride and see how that electric motor performs. All right, here we go. Damn, I love these pegs, man. I think this is the most comfortable position, at least for me. I'm almost 5'11". And yeah, I think I fit on this really well, better than any other scooter. And here we go, we're on the eco mode. So the eco mode is of course the least powerful but what they have done is it still allows you to go up to 55 kilometers an hour and at the same time they have also given you access to all 26 27 newton meters of torque that you have available with this motor 
and that helps you as you saw there to climb up the steepest inclines even with a pillion so that's really good thinking so that's the eco mode on this mode you're supposed to you can expect a range of 120 is what they claim we can't test it today we have a very short time with this scooter but uh, we'll know more once we get it for a longer time now let's switch gears a little bit ride mode and yeah the throttle response is definitely improved and as you can see here that's the other thing which they have done they have region on this it's not adjustable manually but adjust on its own in every single mode so in the eco mode it doesn't kick in as hard but now i can feel it kick in a little bit better in the ride mode as we go into rush oh yeah this is by far the most responsive and it's accelerating so fast to a top speed of 90 You can also feel the region kick in much much harder there but overall in terms of the performance i have to say this is not this feels kind of underwhelming compared to its competitors and a big reason behind that is because this one weighs in at 140 kgs that's almost 15 kgs more than the ola s1 pro almost 25 kgs more than uh, the aether 450x and that's why you don't really feel the torque kick in as hard as you do on the Ola or the Aether, especially initially. But uh, I like the region the way they have set it. The idea there was to make it as seamless as uh, the engine braking that you feel on a ice or a cycle or a scooter. And I think they have done a good job there. Now next we are coming up to this massive speed bump. And wow, I did not even feel it. Even this road right here looks smooth, it's not. It's the suspension which is doing all the work. Really good suspension, really absorbing all of these things very, very well. But the only place I feel uh, it left me wanting a little bit is I feel it can do with a little more rebound damping. You feel that when you're braking really hard, especially using the front brake. And um, you also feel it when you're going over uh, some of the really hard bumps where you can feel the feedback coming on to your fingers a lot so that's where I feel the rebound damping a little more rebound damping can help a lot and also when you are hitting the corners that will help the bike feel a little more planted at especially at corner entry and will prevent it from running wide and the other interesting thing that they've done with the brakes is this is at least the first electric vehicle which I've ridden which has a three piston caliper at the front the two pistons when you're braking only on the front and the third piston activates when you're using the combined braking or the rear brake because right now I feel the braking power kind of also overpowers the grip available from the tires and the rear seems to come around fairly quickly which would be could be slightly scary especially when you're riding in the wet and you have to suddenly brake too hard so what do i make of the river indy well there are so many things to like about it from a practical standpoint it checks all the right boxes it's super comfortable, super spacious. I mean, you have more than enough space for carrying whatever it is that you want to carry. Also in terms of comfort, in terms of ergonomics, I think this is by far the most comfortable scooter for my 511 frame. I fit on it perfectly. There's enough and more room for me to move around. And even then there's enough and plenty room for the pillion, which is great, which is exactly what you need in a city commuter. The motor, uh, that left me a little bit wanting. But then again, they were not chasing performance figures. They, they have again st stuck with the practical aspect of it. And from that front, I'm eager to ride this in the city to see how it performs. And I would also like adjustable levers for the brakes because I feel the rear brake lever is a little too far for me to reach. So that would be a small thing which would make 
the Indy even more comfortable. But yeah, overall, I think uh, I'm coming back quite impressed with the potential this one packs. And I really envy those folks who pre-booked this for the price it came for, which is 1,25,000. That's obviously not going to be the price that you and I am going to purchase it for. We still don't know the price yet. They will be announcing it uh, in the near future. But yeah, that's something which I'm really looking forward to see where exactly the Indy slots in among the multitude of EV scooters that we now have available. And I cannot wait to again spend more time with it in the city and do a proper range test which is obviously something which we could not do here let us know what you think about it and would you be interested in this radical looking ev scooter while we anxiously wait to ride it a little bit longer back home